Hi, I want to welcome you all to this recording that's part of a larger series offering mental health and suicide prevention information, support, and resources in response to the global pandemic. My name is Kelsey Schmitz, and I work for the University of Washington at the School Mental Health Assessment Research and Training Center, or SMART Center, as the School Mental Health Lead to the Northwest Mental Health Technology Transfer Center. Our center is located in Seattle, Washington. In response to the critical need for information during and after the global pandemic, a group of organizations based in the Northwest region have quickly formed an alliance to join together uh, to co-develop, co-deliver, co-sponsor, and co-brand content, resources, and other information. In an effort to bring together in one spot a wealth of relevant information and access to school mental health experts, the Northwest MHTTC and the UW Smart Center are partnering with Forefront Suicide Prevention Center, Drs. Jim and Liz Mazza, the Association of Washington School Principals, Northwest Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports Network, Sound Supports, and Well Educator to bring you the Wellbeing Series. If you'd like to learn more about the Wellbeing Series, please visit our Wellbeing Series webpage and learn about the other events that are planned. All the events are free and anyone's welcome to join. If you have any questions, you can reach out to my colleague, Megan Lucy. As I mentioned, we're part of the National Mental Health Technology Transfer Center Network. This network is funded by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and includes 10 regional centers, a National American Indian and Alaska Native Center, a National Hispanic and Latino Center, and a network coordinating office. If you're interested in reaching out to the Northwest region, where we support the workforce development of school mental health professionals in Alaska, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho, you can find information for how to email us, how to visit our website, sign up for our newsletter, and connect with us on social media. Now we hope that you will join us to um, go into the living room of Drs. Jim and Liz Mazza with their family as they teach their kids the basics of emotional regulation and specific skills such as mindfulness, distress tolerance, and interpersonal effectiveness. Essential skills at any time, but even more critical during COVID-19. We hope you'll tune into this lesson and the other lessons that are scheduled to help your kids and, and your family reduce conflict and keep this pandemic in perspective. If you're interested, here's the weekly schedule. All lessons will be recorded and posted to YouTube. You can also watch these on YouTube Live by subscribing to the DBT in Schools YouTube page. We also invite you to join us on May 19th and June 16th for a session live with Drs. Jim and Liz Mazza. These sessions require registration and you can get those registration links as well as information about uh, the rest of this series by visiting the website at the bottom of this slide. We hope you enjoy this lesson. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I am Dr. Liz Dexter Mazza, and this is the DBT Steps A class for student skills for surviving and thriving during COVID-19 and beyond. We started this class um, about now 16 weeks ago, or not 16 weeks ago. Is that right? 12 uh, weeks end ago? Of March. End of March. Um, teaching the, the social emotional learning skills from the DBT Steps A curriculum to our kids here as part of our home from school um, a curriculum and then we decided if we're going to teach it to them we wanted to share it all with you so you could learn your DBT Steps A skills as well use this in your classrooms in your home um, wherever you find it useful for you so we are so glad you were here with us today is our last class um, mm -hmm. As we are finishing up the school year, our kids finish school tomorrow, so they didn't want to keep going through the summer. I don't know why, um, but we are glad you are all here with us. I never said that. I'm kidding. Let me make a couple of announcements really fast. So um, for those of you who are here with us, just want to let you know that um, myself and Jim, my partner and their dad, will be doing a live Q&A next Tuesday, June 16th from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and you can register for that Q&A on dbtinschools.com and that is sponsored by Forefront and Suicide Prevention and the Northwest Mental Health Technology Transfer Center. So we hope you'll join us there. Um, you can also join Jim and I every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 7 a.m. Seattle time 
for our Parenting Through COVID-19 and Beyond, where we talk about how we use the skills ourselves every day to manage this time of COVID and how we do all the parenting. And now we're talking about how do we get ready for summer when we have even less structure than we've been having already. So we hope you'll join us um, both there. And you can find all that information on our website for dbtinschools.com. All right, so one of the things we do um, for all of our classes is we always start with a mindfulness exercise. Time out, maybe we can introduce the class uh, just in case. Just about oh. to get there. Okay. And um, as we do that and get ready for it, I'm gonna introduce the rest of our classroom to all of you and we'll get started. So, can you start over here, or sir? Um, introduce my yourself. name's Ashton. I'm mm. in sixth grade and I'm 12. My name's Grace, I'm eight and I'm in second grade. My name is Jackson, I am 13 and I'm in seventh grade. Excellent, and yourself? I am Jim Baza. I am one of the co-developers of the DBT in School Steps A curriculum that will be, uh, that we've kind of just going to be summarizing from at least today. All right? Yes. And All he's right. our daddy. And I am the dad. Wait, what yes. are you doing? And we have figured out how to turn our living room into a oh, recording classic. studio for you all twice a week. And we've been building mastery on that. So this has been a fun project. All right, so today for our mindfulness exercise, we do all these different mindfulness exercises every class so that we can practice the mindfulness skills to help us live mindfully from day to day. And so today we're going to do the same one we started off with and we've done a couple times. It's one of our family favorites um, and it's, a, it's one of the mindfulness practices that pulls many of the skills in together. So guys, what sound ball. we are going to play sound ball. It's also known as throwing sound. So hopefully you guys are excited to do that at home as well. So let's um, make sure if you can get yourself into a mindfulness um, mindset and get ready with the people who you're home with and try to practice this as well. Who wants to tell them the instructions? Me, 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 oh. me, 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 me. Be loud in your... Tell you me, want me, to me, tell me, 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 me. No, uh, me. I you were saying. Okay, go Ashton. So you play Look sound... Look at the camera. Yeah. So you play sound ball. Um, so everyone stands in like a circle, like semi-circle, or like the best you can do. And someone starts by making a sound and doing like a little action, so I can go like, booga booga booga, and then I'd go, I'd go, well, I'd go like, booga booga, and then like next, like the next per person, ooga booga, like the person who I went like that to, they would catch the sound by saying it again, and then they make up their own sound and throw it to someone else, All and right. then it goes around and around. Okay, and Gracie, what mindfulness skills are we going to be practicing while we do that? Um, Jackson, one in the moment. One doing one thing in the moment. Jackson, what else? One mindfully. One mindfully. That's yep. One thing. What else are we gonna practice? Which other mindfulness? Oh, 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 not looking at in the future of what you're going to that's say. One, that's one. That's one mindfully. Yeah, I love that you guys being are thinking about this. Being non-judgmental. <laughs> And it's oh, what type gosh. of action? We are going to fully participate. participate. Okay, you guys are on. We're going to fully Let's throw dance. ourselves into this, not thinking oh, about gosh. what sound we're going to be throwing next or what sound we just threw. We're going to just stay in the moment, not thinking about what we're going to do in our turn, because if we're thinking about what's going to happen in the future and when it comes to our turn, we're missing this moment. And that's about participating and being here right now. And we're going to be non judgmental of our own sounds hmm. or of other people's sounds and let but, that go. All right. Yeah. And while we're doing that, we're all going to be in wise mind, right? We're going to kind of notice how we can be present and effective, right, as well, without getting too emotional mind, not getting so excited that it causes problematic like behavior for us, right? Like a dog. Right. Oh, we're all about the dog here. It's official. Okay. We are So that is dog. what we are going to practice. We're going to um, put our, what was it? how do we do it? We're, I'm going to just turn my microphone on mute so we don't blow out your speakers, or you might just want to... Um, decrease the volume on your speakers in case it gets really loud. We really want you all who are with us to practice at home as well. Even if it's just throwing in, if there's, if you're by yourself watching, just throw in in moments when you, anytime you want to catch one of our sounds and throw that out there. Practice jumping in. Don't, rather than just watching and observing, I want you to participate um, at home too. All right, so everybody up. No, dad's in. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Can I go first? Mm. You want to start it? Yeah. Okay. So you I'm start. Black and Jackson, though. I'm yep. in the middle. So, right, so come right over here. Okay. There we go. So Jackson, okay. You're good. Do we have everybody? Can't see Grace. Can't see Grace. 
Right there, right there, right there, right there. Okay. Ready, Grace? You're going to start? Go ahead, Grace. You get to start. Shazam! Oh, I knew it. Shazam! <laughs> Bum. Bum. Boing! Boing! <laughs> Ree! Ree! Did we meet our How? How? La la la! La la Forza what's up? Ruff! Ruff! Yeah. question that I always ask after we do it. What, what did, did you, you notice? notice? All right. And why do I ask that? Because it's relevant to our life. Because it's work. Because that's one of the skills worth for watching called observations. Right. To make observations. To make <laughs> Isn't that to wordless? Observe. No. Wordless is observations and describing is when we put words on it. So to observe and describe. So Jackson, what did you notice? What mm -hmm. can you describe during that exercise? That a lot of people were just doing actions as well as doing the sound. Okay, so you observed that we were added actions into our you sounds. Like, and you guys at home put in the chat bar any observations you had as well. Already asked them that. There are great. You want more? Right, Grace, what did you observe? Um, after Shazam, I had no clue what to say. Right, so you were staying in the moment? I had no clue. And and you were, were you getting worried? Were you having some worry thoughts? Oh, so notice that you were getting maybe not one mindful and moving into the future a little. Hey, Grace, do you hear me? Yeah. Were you getting, were you not being one mindful and getting into the future? No, I was there. I was just, I didn't know what to say. Okay. And was there a judgment about that? A little? Worried? A little anxious about what would come, what it came to you? Right? And so that's one of the reasons we practice this is so that we can practice being one mindfully because worry is about what's going to happen in the future and bringing it back to being right here, right now. Okay, Ashton, what did you observe? That um, we were very, very loud. Mm -hmm. That every single sound we made, the microphone bar turned bright red because we were like uh, super loud and above max. Oh, did you get distracted on occasion by going and looking at the microphone uh -huh. volume? Um, I started to like try to anticipate who was gonna throw to who next. Like if it went like Gracie to dad, dad to mom, mom to Jackson. Okay. So what Jackson would, would, what would that be? What were you doing in that moment then? I was thinking in the future. He was thinking in the future. Okay, so then what did you all observe at home? We have not received okay. anything in the chat bar All right, yet. throw that in. So here's my next question. Got, or Grace, tell me, what's the next Whoa. question going to be? How is this relevant to our lives? How is playing a game like sound ball relevant to our lives? So we're not missing the moment. So we don't like miss the moment. Non-judgmental, like just doing what you want. Practice being non-judgmental like. of yourself or of others so that you kind of jump in and do what you want. Okay, Jackson, how is it relevant to you doing practice like this? Um. Being in the moment. Okay, so also pr getting you to practice being in the moment, kind of getting out of your head and kind of being participatory with everybody. I like being in my head. I know. So that's exactly one of the reasons why we practice this um, for everybody, right? So we're going to practice being in the moment. Sometimes we have to get out of our heads and participate in our environment around us. So let, that's why we do this. All right, guys, this has been so fun um, doing all these classes with you. I know it's been extra work for all of us to kind of set up the living room studio as we have it here and um, doing all these mindfulness exercises. Dad and I are going to switch roles now. Daddy has a question. Oh, Dad's got a question. From home, from yes. our audience, uh, the exercises bring them, bring them joy. So that's something that they've noticed. Okay, right? notice that that's joy increases. That's a judgment. No, it's not. They're noticing the motion, emotion of joy in there, and they prefer that. 
Okay, great. Are you ready to make the switch? Uh, let's go. All right, and I will jump in and out as we kind of go through All right. this. Sounds good. All right, we guys ready? Hey, Abby. Good. I'm going to take your pillow because I know that that is, distracts you, so I'm going to do that in advance. Can you put that behind you now? Your mic's falling. Oh, thank you. All right. Can I put it like this? Uh, you can hold on to it, but that's going to get in the way of you helping me out a little bit later. I think you should put it behind you. That's my my uh, suggestion. Here. All right. So we're a little bit sad that this is the this is the end. We're going to bring everything all together, right? And so d with our emotion of possible sadness, would it fit the facts? No. no. Really? Yes. You know, yes. Think a little bit, right? We've been preparing every Tuesday and Thursday to have class w with our group. I think it does kind of fit the facts. So if it fits the facts, we me. would say. Some of that sadness is it opposite is it, that? Well, only if our thermometer is above sixty-five. So you can see I'm starting to weave in all sorts of things that we're going to start talking about. Okay, Ugh. and so pros and cons if, if it's Christ, if it's up at Christ's level. So uh, here's what we're going to do, Mom. If you can take me to the next slide, and I need your participation. You guys can look at the screen so you see the slide. What what is this screen? What is this slide telling us about what we've been talking about? Uh, oh, it's like a teeter totter. It is the teeter totter. Ashton, why is that important? Oh, oh, um, because you need both of them. Beautiful, Ashton. You need both of them. All of us can work on uh, our change, right? We know what we would like to see different about ourselves. Wait, also, though, we, both of what? Both acceptance and change. Both sides of the teeter totter, teeter -totter. are uh, represent everyone, right? We need to also, though, really accept ourselves for who we are right now, and not judgmentally. We, can, we can do better, right? That's and why be not accepting yourself right. as you are. That's right. And so, <laughs> notice, right? We're going to talk about that a little bit, and then what can we do better, right? So both things happen. The, the big trick in using the skills and with that behavior therapy is figuring out which side of the teeter totter are you on, right? And so that'll tell us. And so if we can go back to that slide, all right. There are times on the teeter-totter that we need to do the acceptance side, right? We need to validate ourselves or validate uh, other people, right? Say, like, Those, this is hard. So hold on a second. Yeah. Correct. And so there are two modules of skills that we've learned in our class on the acceptance side. Can you see them? Uh, the acceptance side is... Uh, opposite action? No. So that's not a module, though. That's a skill within. So, Jackson, why don't you look at the slide on the, on the screen and you'll see. The emotion... Okay, what does it say? Mindfulness skills. I and cannot read that. The stress tolerance skills. Great, so those are two sets of categories, right? We call them modules, but there's there's a group of skills that are mindfulness skills, and there are a group of skills that are distress tolerance skills. All right, Grace, you're on. Can you think of any mindfulness skills? Um, well, I think all of them are mindfulness skills. Use the names. Tips. Tip is a uh, crisis survival skill. Oh. Uh, three states of mind. Three states of mind, and which the, which is the big one that's in there? Mindfulness. Wise, wise mind. mind. There you go. There you go. Wise mind. All right. Can we think of any other any. skills in mindfulness that we learned? Dialectics. Dialectics. What? How? We learned that's what and how skills. Great, Ashton. What are the what skills? Uh, what <laughs> skills? Yeah. What are the what skills? I forget. You forget? <laughs> you, you, you comment on this all the time. Um. You want a lifeline? Do you have homework? You can ask for a lifeline. Who do you want to call on? You. No, I'm still. <laughs> Buddy. All right, Jack, with the what skills? Um, I think I only have two of them. That's all right. Go ahead. Observation, describe, and may participate. It is. All three of them. Beautiful. Yay. So when we observe, what do we call that, Ashton? Um. Wordless watching. See, I knew you had that wordless watching. I nice job, something. Jackson. You're three for three. Yay. When we describe, we put words to our observations. And then the sound ball today was participating, fully participating. Okay, that's the what Can skills. I do the what how skills. skills. You, want the, you want the how skills? Go ahead, Grace. Um, non judgmental. Non judgmentally, great. Um. What are the other ones? You can ask Jackson. Go ahead, Jackson. One mindfully. Beautiful. Jackson's on his A game today. He's one mindfully. We're missing one. In the moment. Not That's one mindfully. That's one mindfully. Close. What else we missing? Effective. Effective. Grace. Grace. Pulling it out. All right. So being effective. Those are the mindfulness skills. 
Now, on that slide, though, I also <coughs> had them the triple asterisk, right? I had three oh, stars, but why? Triple why? A. Not, that, that was for radical acceptance, so that's not oh. the triple A model. So I, I love <laughs> that you want to get that in there. Why is the mindfulness skills triple star? Why are they so important? Because, because they're the core um, thing to everything. Beautiful. The core double. Come on, don't leave me hanging, everything. girl. All right. So double, right? So that's right. None of the other skills work without the mindfulness skills. So we highlight them with three asterisks in the model, all right? Uh, and then, Mom, can you, uh, oh, let's, let's do the other side. So before we go on to our next slide, so we've got on the validation side or, or the acceptance side, we had mindfulness and distress tolerance. <coughs> there are two categories of distress tolerance. Remember what they are? Emotion regulation. Two categories. Crisis survival score. Crisis survival. And opposite action. Opposite action. Everybody loves opposite action. Opposite action emotion is, regulation. Using emotion regulation. Skills. I said so that. So crisis survival. There's another category though of distress tolerance. Below skills. 65. So cri crisis survival is short term. What's our long term one? Emotion opposite regulation. Action. What's our long term ones? And it's Radical not, acceptance. It's not going to be on there. Yes, it is. It is <laughs> accepting reality <laughs> skills, right? <laughs> so that's okay. This is good. I like that you guys are agonizing over where all these go, right? And so I'm hoping to describe for you, audience, where these are going to fit. I'm going to show you a picture of how we can put all these things together. So that right? you're saying you are being amused with the torture? I, I like that you're agonizing. It's that not it, torture. It's not torture. It's, it's like you try to... That's not like what you mean no, with agonizing. Agonizing means it's just it's a mental exercise. You're trying to figure out where it all fits, right? And that's going to be important. F figure out where these all fit is going to take a lifetime. We're going to be using these skills for the rest of our lives. All right. So we've got the acceptance side. Two, two modules, right? Two categories. Mindfulness and distress tolerance. Let's flip over to the other side of the teeter-totter, and now we have our change skills. What are the two categories there, the two modules? Opposite action. Now you can go. Crisis survival. Crisis no. survival is on the other Emotion side. Emotion ah. regulation. Distress tolerance. Emotion regulation. Dang it. Distress tolerance. Distress, distress tolerance is on the acceptance side. Well, right? there's also acceptance. Wave skill. Wave skills and emotion regulation skills. Oh. So we're coming up with modules, right? Mom, We're just look, naming so look, look back at the screen. Look back at the screen. Facts. I can't look read a single the, thing on the, the screen. Look back at the screen. All right? And you can see... And emotion and regulation. Emotion regulation and, and interpersonal, interpersonal effectiveness. Right? Uh, All right. Grace, come on back. Thank you. Right? So those are the big categories. We learn skills within those categories. All right? So give me... Why do we do interpersonal effectiveness skills? <laughs> to make you feel better about yourself. Could be, or well, that's what else? the fast skills. It is fast, good grace, because that's for self-respect, right? So that's true. What about the two other uh, interpersonal effective skills? The give anyway? skills. Give skills. What's that for? Making you feel better. Fast skills. Like, um, yeah. the relationship. Relationship effectiveness, beautiful. And then what are, are we missing? There's a third one that we're missing. How? And it's a huge skill for you guys. Fast skill. Mm mm. Um, sitting with your fast, husband? fast, and give. We already got. We're Tips. missing one. We're missing one. Tips. Really important. We walk through it because of some little creature that you want. Dear uh, man. man. It is the dear man. That's We're right. getting a little doggy. Okay, so let's hold it's on. It's a now. little okay. doggy. So when do we use our dear man skill? To when get a dog. When, when you want to get closer to an objective and you need someone else's permission. There you go. Beautiful. Mm. Or. We want to say no to something, right? Uh -huh. So our dear man and then skills. There's the ten levels is, of intensity. To that's right, and no. that's another interpersonal effectiveness. Evaluate options and intensity. Great. All right, that's interpersonal effectiveness. Now let's go to the column of emotion regulation. So Jackson, yeah. now name one of your favorite skills in emotion regulation. Opposite action. Opposite action. All right. So great. All right. Opposite action is one of the skills. What else did we learn in in emotion regulation? To help us. Wave. Wave skills. Wave skill. Great. And then what else? Teflon mind. The Teflon, come in and come out. Yes, so that's a wave that's skill, great. Right? Yep. This you one's a little bit harder, it? and I don't know if mom or I taught much of it. We talked about accumulating positives and building mastery. Do you remember that? In oh, yeah. ABC, right? So that's about reducing our vulnerability, that's which also means that you don't want to be eating your fingers so that you have them later on in your life. One, two, okay. three. Um, so those are on the other side. So here's what I want you to do. Mom, can you please go to um, the next slide? And Ashton, that Teflon mind piece mm -hmm. is, is actually the, obs the observed skill, right? Let it come in and let it go without saying anything, right? Oh, that makes the sense. The wave skill is let it come in 
you can notice it, and it'll the urge is going to go down, right? Anything at, with that emotion will, because it's a wave, correct. All right. So, can we go to that next slide? There it is. We saw this slide on Tuesday, all right? Now, there's a lot that's there, right? If the emotions are above 65, we do distress tolerance scales, emotions below 65. We're doing emotional regulation skills, right? And so we have a lot that's there. I want to simplify that for you. So if you, if you grab your clipboards, and folks at home, you do not have this handout because it was not created uh, for our book. I want uh, Liz to pull it up. I'm going to show you what I think is a really neat way to remember the skills. Okay? And there it is. It's what's called our Emotion Response Roadmap. And I'm going to walk you through this, okay? And so the first thing that has to happen is we use our mindfulness skills so that we can determine what our body's telling us, right? Is that right, Grace? Yeah. Um, and yes. so that's important for understanding where we are. The first thing we want to check is we want to do this real internal check on ourselves. Is that our emotion is our emotion above 65 or below 65? If it's above 65, Jackson, where are we going? What's the Crisis survival. Jackson, your voice got There's really high all of a sudden. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's crisis survival. So that's great, Grace. Wait. So <clears throat> crisis survival if the intensity is above 65. Um, okay. I don't know if that's so, so Jackson. You, you, I'll, I'll I'll fix that in just a second. Okay. Okay. Great. So if it's above sixty five, and and the kids are looking at the same emotional roadmap that you are, mom. If you want to put that screen that slide back up there again, you can see that if your emotion thermometer is greater than sixty five, which is exactly what that says, right? It says your your emotions are greater than sixty five. It's crisis survival. Okay, can you see that? Mm -hmm. They're less than 65. So that's on your sheet over here. Look, here's the emotion. Above 65 oh. is here. You see it? Below greater 65 sign? is yeah, emotion regulation. I get confused regulation. on which one is greater and which one is less understand. than. That's why I was going to help you out. Emotion okay. intensity is less than. Okay, so oh. there's two spots though, right? On this slide, if we go to the emotion intensity, so that's great that uh, Liz has it highlighted. It's greater than uh, 65. We're going to use... Are what skills? Crisis survival. So, right? No. Or distress or tolerance skills. No, nope. Distress tolerance skills, mainly crisis survival skills. Why? Our crisis survival so skills are beautiful. That's exactly right. Are you the crisis survival skills. I'll give, you, I'll give you one here. The crisis survival skills are to help not solve the problem, they're to make it not worse skills, right? Mm -hmm. And we use them to help us do something instead of giving into our emotional urge. Now, Grace, you talked about one of these as being a favorite skill of yours. In a crisis survival skill, what's one of your skills that you might use? And you can accepts. look at your sheet. Accepts, exactly. So we distract with accepts. That's on the chart. If you go down, after the red stop sign that says crisis survival, which is one of our distress tolerance skills, is the accepts acronym. I was going to say right? tips skills. And we distract with our what, yeah. what piece there is. I there's. also really like tips. Um. We distract using our... What skill? Wise mind. We distract with wise mind, right? Yeah. We also have a skill, Jackson, that you tend to like. Pros and cons. Pros and cons. That's also a crisis survival skill. What and about tip skills? can be used as a decision making. And tip skills. That's right. So we tip talk skills. about tip, right? So we've well, got a bunch of them. improved skills? What's that? The improved skills. It's another acronym. We didn't cover that much in our class. We couldn't cover them all because we didn't have enough meetings, okay? So this is only our 21st meeting, and we've got like 26 only. skills. It is. So only. All right. So... Crisis survival, right? That's what happens if our temperature inside of us is above 65. What if it's below 65, though? Emotion, Emotion regulation. Now, keep in mind, too, I'm going to come back to the audience, that 65 that. is a guideline, okay? It doesn't and you can stay in though. your wise mind, right, and be at a 70 or a 75. It depends on how strong those urges are, and then if you can keep saying, I'm in wise mind, I'm in wise mind, all right? And so that becomes important. So you could do a, like a wave scale, which is over on the change side, so a, even at a 70 or 72, all right? So that 65 is your internal thermometer, where 100 is, you are absolutely going to jump out of your skin. You are so emotionally high, and zero is almost like you're comatose. You're dead. Okay? So it's comatose. now, uh, like, 
Uh, the death sleep. The death sleep. So relaxed. The death sleep. Sleeping. The death sleep. Basically. No, 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 you're, no, you're just you're sleeping. Blocked. Blocked. Basically, it's so, kind of so reasonable mind because it has no poor, emotion at all. Poor choice of words. <laughs> Let's not get comas involved. Okay. <laughs> all right. So it's like you're sleeping. Okay. You're all right. so relaxed. You have yeah. no emotion. Just totally chill. All right. So if it's below 65, now look on your chart. And mom, let's go back to that. Now we actually have. They don't fit the fact. We actually have now the um, change skills that we're doing, right? And you can see on the chart that if the crisis survival skills work, you can see there's an arrow that says the emotions cooled down to under 65. Now, if we don't like that emotion and we want to get rid of it, what skills can we use? Emotion. That's right, emotion regulation skills. And if we now know it's emotion regulation, the first She's thing that we do check the facts. is check the facts. That's right. There's the fork in the road. Then we do the opposite regulation. action. Well, so if we no, check the facts, we which check. is our thoughts, and the thoughts do, do not, not fit the facts, the facts or there's, all, there's other facts could, that could explain it, what do we do? Problem solving? No, we do opposite action, right? If the oh. facts yeah. don't fit, yeah. we do the opposite of what so our tough. urge is to do, right? If the facts, so yeah, look at your chart. It's it's all there for you, right? I just can't. So, Mom, can put that chart back it. up there? You can see in the red that's there, if the uh, emotion and intensity do not fit the facts, mm -hmm. then we do opposite action. What if they do fit the facts? Then, then we, we use do. problem solving? Well, so now we say, okay, they fit the facts. Wait, emotion Problem solving. This is already an emotion regulation skill. It problem is. Solving. It's already one of those, okay? You're problem solving. What, what if it's not solvable? What if it's like COVID-19? You do um, use the wave skill or radical acceptance. So or you're willing. Unicorn. So you can see if the facts fit the situation, we actually come to another road again, another fork in the road. <gasps> Is it solvable? Is it not? If it's solvable, you do problem solving. You do problem solving. Great. If it's not solvable, and often we find ourselves in a lot of those situations where it's not solvable, right? Grace is going to use her unicorn skill. That's right. Fly above it, Grace. We don't have that in our book yet, so maybe in the uh, elementary one. Uh, so if it's unsolvable, we have multiple options. We have the wave skill, which we can sit and have this wave come over us. Radical right? acceptance. Radical acceptance means we can't change the reality. But don't, so, the, so like the, the Black the Lives Matter and protesting, right? COVID-19, that's radical acceptance. The emotion from that, it could be wave scale. And there's one other one that I don't think that we spent much Willing time on. Willingness. Willingness. Willingness, which means that we're turning the mind to willingness and not willfulness, like it shouldn't, couldn't have, wouldn't happen. Shouldn't, so could have, Grace was in that spot when she chipped her dude. No shit. That, that, that was, that's not fair. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have happened. happened. It shouldn't have happened, right? Well, and so willingness to say it did happen, accepting reality, radical acceptance, and then turning my mind, yes, it happened. Yes, it happened. That's the willfulness piece. All right. So you can see at home that that is a strategic roadmap all in one picture about what we want to do. And I want to make sure that we highlight, though, that there are two sets of uh, skills, two modules that are not included in this emotional roadmap. Uh, dialectical behavior. It's not a module. You're dialectical thinking, right? Black and white thinking, good. And what else? Though? What else is not in there? Is two modules. Um. Mindfulness. No. Core mindfulness. Oh, yeah, mindfulness. Great. Yeah. Mindfulness is not in there. And the interpersonal effectiveness skills are not in there, right? And so. This gives you the uh, roadmap when the emotions are happening, right? This is so the emotion. Here's, okay. here's what I want to do, all right? So if you can give me the next slide, Mom, and this is, this is for you at home. I want you to, to um, do this as well. I'm going to give you 30 seconds at home to write down and name your three favorite skills that you've seen us do in uh, our class, all right? And you can see I've included a column in here, so we do need you to participate. We want you to participate. And we're going to take our 30 seconds, turn off our mics for those 30 seconds, and see what we come up with for our skills as well. Ready? Let's go ahead and turn them off.
All right. So hopefully that would give you enough time to come up with three skills. So here's what we're going to do with the skills. First, I'm going to go around to our classroom here and ask them to name the three skills. Then I'm going to ask them to define or tell us what those three skills are. And then I'm going to ask them where do they go on our chart? Which module of skills do they go in, right? And so hopefully that will help us kind of get some more familiarity with what we're doing. All right, Jackson, I'm going to start with you. So what three skills did you name? Pros and cons. Okay, let mom catch up because she's going to write them in. Pros and cons. Emotion regulation. Emotion regulation is a module. Oh. That's not a skill. Wait, which one did I do again? Oh, yeah, it opposite action. Okay, so so you've named two. So let's go back to, what was your first one? Pros and cons. Pros and cons. Where does it fit? Uh, take your, crisis take, survival. Take your, take your pencil. Yeah, so put in crisis survival fits where? You're absolutely right. It's one of our what's. It's, what type of skill does it go to? Um, is it emotion regulation? Is it interpersonal effectiveness? Is it distress tolerance? Or is it mindfulness? Distress tolerance? It is. Distress tolerance. So put a DT by yours. Oh. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Put a, put a DT and then go to the next one. Disney. That's okay, Jackson. Just go ahead. Don't worry about it, Jackson. Go to the next one. Okay, emotion... Uh, Opposite action. So where does opposite action fit? Emotional regulation. What is opposite action? Um, doing something that you don't like. No, not doing something you don't like. on your that's, urges. That's right, Grace. It's not acting. It's doing the opposite of what your emotion urge wants you to do. Yeah. Right? So you don't want to do that. Right? Yeah. So that's great. So what, where would that, so that's an emotional regulation. So that's emotional regulation skill. What's your last one? Wave skill. Wave skill. Great. So what's wave skill? The pro, uh, check the facts. Wave skill check the facts are two different two uh, different skills. So what place does it go? What category? Problem solving. Is another skill in emotion regulation. So Jackson, I'm right here. You're worried about the lead there. Okay, don't worry about that at this point. Okay. So where does the wave skill fit in in, in no 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 look at the bottom of your sheet there. Is it a interpersonal factor skill? Is it emotion regulation skill? Is it a just challenge skill or is it a mindfulness skill? Interpersonal effectiveness? It is not. Okay, um, so it's an emotional regulation skill. Oh, I thought it wasn't personal nope. effectiveness. No, because think about it. Now flip over your, your chart, and you can see from there, where's the wave skill? Where do you see it on the chart, on the map? It's under emotional regulation, and it's unsolvable, right? We do mm. the wave skill. Emotion intensity below 65 is emotion regulation. That's right. Great. Okay, that's okay. This is why we're, do this is why we're doing our review, right? Grace, what skills do you have? Tip skills. Tip skills? So what's tip skill, though? Um... Getting rid of your emotion by distracting by yourself. Dis or, or no, it's like hacking into your system. That's right, using your body to reduce its emotions. Hacking Great. into your system. So do you remember what the T-I-M-P stand for? Um, I just know one of the is dunking your head in a bucket of water. That's right, so that, that's, so that's the temperature. The I is for intense exercise. Intensity. And the P is for... Participate? Nope, that's 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 a what skill? Pace, I don't know. Pace, pace breathing. breathing. Okay. So great. So Grace, what category does that do the tip skills fall under? Um. And you can use your chart. But I wasn't able to. You were. Not my last one. Wait, I told you to look it up. Crisis survival. It is crisis survival, and crisis survival is what kind of what kind of category? You're above sixty-five. It's true, and so is it a distress tolerance? Uh, you don't make it worse. I understand. Is it just distress tolerance, emotional regulation, or interpersonal effectiveness? Distress tolerance. It is distress tolerance. Nice job. What's your second skill that you have? Dear man. Okay, I'm dear man. Is out up here. I'm writing this out for you. They have it as a legend on their sheet. I know. I'm just helping everybody see what the four modules are. Okay. All right. Good assistance. Thanks, mom. All right. So, what do you have, dear man? What kind of, what kind of uh, skill is where does that one fit? Um, interpersonal effectiveness. It is interpersonal effectiveness. And why do we use Dear Man? So you, there's a higher likelihood of you getting what you want. That's right, getting what you want. It's objective effectiveness. Or saying no. Or saying no. Great. What's your third skill? Accepts. Accepts. Where do we put accepts? Crisis survival. Crisis survival. Correct. It's a distract with wise mind accepts. Great, Grace. Fantastic. Ashton, over to you. Um, I did 
I also did accept says my mom. Hey, so where does that fit? Price of survival. Price of survival. Price of survival is one type of um, and a category. No, nope. distress tolerance. Distra oh right? yeah, because you don't. Price of survival short worse. term. Accepting reality skills are long term. Yeah, because okay? you don't want to make it worse. And it's the only one that we're, where we've got two. And so I'm going to add to mom's uh, chart here, right? Distress tolerance. We've got price of survival. Price of survival, and we've got accepting reality. Okay, those are okay. Those are, this is the only one that has the two different ones. All right, so um, what's your second one that you have? Dialectical thinking. Dialectical thinking. So what is dialectical thinking? Like, explain it? Yep, exactly. Explain um, it. Look like, at something it. could be good and bad at like, the same time, not like, oh, it's all bad because I didn't get above like a 95 on a test. It's like... Right. You set like you did really good still, but and like you wish you'd done better. So it's like good like recovery. We don't use the but right because it kind of erases. You use the and and not good and bad because those are judgmental words, well, right? But yeah. So we try to get away from what you said before. You did very well. That, that right? All right or all wrong all type good, of thing. All good, all bad. Right. We get away from that, right? So yin that's yang. not the the yin yang. The non. We want to get to non judgmental thinking. Great. What was your third one? Um, my third one was. Dear man. Dear man. Would Grace kind of cover that? Anything to add to what Grace covered for Dear Man? Remind our audience where it goes. It goes into help getting us a dog. So <laughs> it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a dog. No, nope. but it gets you closer to what you want. So the idea behind the Dear Man, again, object effectiveness, getting what you want, saying no to the things that you don't want, provides us with an opportunity. What did our audience say? Our audience said, um, similar. Wave and opposite action, A, B, C, and dear man, dear man and wave. All right, slow down. So we've got A, B, and C. I like that, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't cover that as one of our three. Where does A, B, and C fit? Um, uh, well, I have my it's not mindfulness. On, it's, not, it's not on the chart. Core, uh, core not, mindfulness? Not quite. Uh, it's not on mindfulness skills. It's a distress tolerance skill. No, it's not on the chart. It's not there. You it's a bunch of regulations skill. It's not there. You you have have skill. Skill. All words. Object of effectiveness. I have said objective, objective <laughs> effectiveness is. Emotion regulation. Is the, the dear man. Objective <laughs> effectiveness is where we had dear man, no, right? That's not it's where we are. Interpersonal effectiveness. Let's go back to when we remember we had the model of all the things and we talked about. Like uh, going on a roller coaster or seeing a yeah. snake, right? Oh. We talk about vulnerability factors. Sometimes when we feel sick, Emotion we didn't get enough right. sleep, we didn't eat the right things. Does that sound familiar? Oh. Anybody? Like honey we get. We are more. We are more uh, emotional, right? So the I A, B, and C, accumulating positives, building mastery, and coping ahead, help us be less vulnerable to our emotions. And so being vulnerable to so your I love emotions, that. if so you get too vulnerable to your did emotions, we have then anything, you Did we have anything else that the audience provided with us there that we, we didn't really know? Um, no, we got them all. Like, so everybody's favorite it sounds like wave, dear man, um, opposite action, and then adding in the ABC, ABC skills, which I like that brings in three more skills in one. Yep, perfect, hey. which is See, great, right? All those so, people who said dear man want to So what we didn't cover, and that you guys talked about problem solving, right? So problem solving is in our emotion regulation uh, module. It is when the facts fit the situation, can, can we solve that problem? So I think that that's also helpful. What we didn't cover in here is the please skills, right? Please also that's helps us, thing. right? So yeah, physical illness, limited screen time, right? Balance eating, oh, yeah. balance- Oh yeah, no uh, drugs. Yeah, and avoiding uh, mood altering drugs, right? Balance sleep and then uh, exercise, right? So that's also there. All right, so here's what I want to do at the end here. So. I see dear man, dear man, dear man. Did, can we go back one more slide? Did everybody have dear man as one of their top three? Um, everyone but Jackson. All right, Jackson did not. That is fine. He doesn't so, want a dog. What? In doing, teaching our class, that's fine. Thanks, you can, in teaching our class, all right? One of the things that we try to do is show how these things stack together, all right? And so I'm gonna go through uh, kind of the review of what we covered today, and then we got one last surprise for you, all right? So can we get to the next slide here? All right. And if there are any questions, put them in the chat bars of what, what about the uh, charts and the things that we've covered all throughout this entire uh, several months that we've, we've been doing this. So here's the big thing, putting it all together. 
What's the core piece that we always have to be aware of? Mindfulness. 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 As a matter of fact, it's so important that we call it core, and Dr. Linehan called it core to be core mindfulness. None of the skills work without mindfulness, mindfulness. All right? And everybody can work on them. We can all improve our mindfulness Dr. skills. Linehan. Dr. Marsha Linehan. She's the one that developed she DBT. She invented DBT. Yep. All right. The second thing is that, um, that all of us can... All of us can work on ourselves using acceptance and change, right? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we can accept who we are. That means all of how we look, all of our uh, behaviors, whether they're strengths or challenges, we have to accept us. And then we also want to work on how to make that change, right? And so we call that a dialectic. Acceptance and change is the major dialectic of all the skills. And that was the teeter-totter, right? We call that a dialectic. Both can happen at the same time, all right? Good. And then, finally, in looking at our emotions that we have, hang in there, Grace, I know that that's bothering you a little bit, all right, is find out what side of the dialectic you're on. So how do we do that? How do we know if we're on the left Check side of your tongue or the right side? Not quite. Pros and cons? Not quite again. Look at your roadmap. I'm a love where are we? Yeah, it's actually the mindfulness skill, figure out where am I emotionally. That's one teeter-totter, right? All right, so now, Jackson, if we're on the emotion regulation side, we come to a fork in the road right away. What's that? Wait, no, he said above 65. Above 65 or below above, 65? I, I said below, though. No, above he said above. He said, he said, check whether you're above or below 65. Uh, no, he said, oops, sorry. So check the facts. That is the first question that we ask ourselves. So if we're below 65, we check the facts. If the facts fit, what do we, we use, do? We um, wave skill. We use wave skill, great grace, or... We check if it's solvable. If it's solvable, if it's problem solvable, solving. we problem solve. If it's not solvable, we wave skill, wave reality acceptance. acceptance. Yep. No radical. Unicorn. Radical. Right. radical sorry. Right. That's okay. Right. Unicorn. Great. So, what if they don't fit the facts? Um, use opposite action. That's right. Opposite action. And to, again, Ashton, tell me what that means. Opposite action. I'm like, asking Ashton. Like you, like you notice your emotion. <laughs> And you just do opposite, like get up, like do something that will like, just like get your mind off of it. Right. And come back when you're like, either like below, like when you're more cooled down and ready. All right. Not acting so on your emotion. On I'm going to give you, the audience, one example that we walked through in the Mazda household here of where we stack skills, all right? Doggy. So going back to Doggy. possibly getting a dog, what my do emotions. Doggy? We're like, oh, no, no, we're not doing that. We're too busy. My thoughts are, no, that's not happening, right? So my emotions aren't above 65, so that means I'm going to check the facts. Do the facts fit that I'm not traveling? Yes. Um, yes. Do the facts fit that I like dogs? Yes. yes. You grew up Do with the dogs. facts fit, if we're ever going to have a, a puppy, that this might be the time? Yes. yes. So if the facts fit... I problem solve or I wave skill, right? Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Problem solve. Well, check right? if it's solvable. So what if what if I was thinking like, oh, we just can't do this, right? We just can't do this. Too that much was my work. thought. Would my thoughts? We just can't do this. Fit the facts? No, no. because school's no. out. So if it, if they didn't fit the facts, because I'm anxious about that, and I used opposite action, the anxiety says move yourself away. No, no, no. Opposite action would say what? Move yourself closer. Approach. That means approach getting a dog. A doggy. Right? All right. The facts do fit. So I get to either problem solve, right? That, that's, that's the main yeah. one. Yep. Can we actually do this? Will this happen? Yes. Then, after the problem solving, I want someone to say to me why we should get it. What skill is that? Dear, dear man. man. It is a dear man. Dear because man. Because it's objective oh effectiveness that we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. And so, getting what you want. Did you dear man me? Yes. yes. Can I call you to dear man me one more time? Yes! Let's You're doing it. it. I'm ready. Not Yay! Grace is the Go master. Ahead. Go ahead. Do it. Daddy? Yep. Um, if we are going to get a dog, good. it would be a... Um, Describe, right? So that was good. If we're going to get a dog... Cockapoo or so Bernie Doodle? Australian express Bernie first. Doodle. So what's your express? Austral Australian Bernie Doodle. Um, I'd really like to get a dog and sell it the rest of the family. It would make us super happy if we did. Okay. Where's um, your, give me your A, your ask. So can we please get a dog? It would be very fun. Um, and then we can 
like you can cuddle with it, um, Ooh, watch movies right? with it. You can also watch movies and it could sleep in our beds. Yeah, so in our beds? You can run with it. Uh, okay, bed. I don't want to sleep in your bed. All right, so that's the R, right? And the and it keep, us, it keep us off screen time because we have yeah. to train. See, yeah, now you're getting there. All right, Grace, with that, I want you to go over to that box over there. The oh corner. no! Oh no! That's so scary. Go ahead, and you can Careful. bring it. Bring it out to the couch, and you can open it. Bring it out to the couch with Ashton. I'm scared. Bring it out to the couch. Pick, it, up. pick it up. Pick it's it not up. It's not heavy. Careful! Careful! I think it's empty. Bring it, bring, bring it over to Ashton. It better be empty. Because Grace might drop it and be like, "Cool." All right, Grace, can you open that for our... Actually, Grace, put it right here. Open it for our audience. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yep, there you go. Y'all can see. Come on. What do you got? A doggy! Ruff, ruff! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will, after our 21 sessions of DBT Steps A, uh, Student Skills and... Uh, for Let's get in the doggy! We, the Mazov clan, will be getting a puppy when we get at our chance. So... Thank yeah, you for everyone. Look at the uh, doggy! You can see that the kids behind me are announcing. So if you can hear me over them shouting. Uh, Yay, doggy! Remember that we are live uh, next week, Tuesday, June 16th at 10 to 11 a.m. We'll show you the Pacific dog we're time. getting. And so please come and join us. You can register at DBT in schools. This is also being sponsored by Forefront uh, Suicide Prevention and the Northwest Mental Health Technology Transfer Center. So please come and join us. And also, during the summertime, Liz and I are going to continue to do our parenting through COVID-19. We think this is a pretty tough time. We could also extend it. I mean, that was the title that we came up with back in March. We could also be parenting through this, this uh, protesting or this uh, systematic change that we need to be doing, right? So we certainly know that we've got some systemic change that needs to be done, right? We can accept some things for where they are, and we know things have to change as well. All right. With that, please go and have a great summer. And... We will keep you posted. If we see you in the fall, we'll hopefully have our puppy at that point. All right. We're so getting the doggy. Come here, Grace. Get the doggy. Bring it in here. Grace. Doggy. And we just really want to say thank you all for joining us, just tuning doggy. in twice a week um, with us, Appreciate watching it. live, doggy. watching um, the recordings. We've just had so much fun doing school from home with you. Turn around. And um, we really hope you have a fun summer full of accumulating positives, building mastery, talking about skills, um, and being skillful as you go forward. So thank you to you three, all four of you, thank for you, doing audience, this. Thank you, audience, for watching. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And everybody, have a wonderful summer. Thanks. Bye-bye. Don't forget. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Doggy.